invitation to uh, talk here. And well, today my idea is that change the people that came mind and uh, get out with another overview about what is happening in the world and about education. And of course, the best way to make this is to tell stories, right? And a mathematician is a very good storyteller because if we are, oh, it's not moving. Okay. If we know, if if you know mathematicians, if we are if we are doing that, people understand math is because we tell with the stories, right? So, uh, first of all, I want to tell you the story of this woman that is Laura, and uh, this was a girl that got a very good grades at the school, but um, she was seeing the suffering of other people when um, they didn't get those grades. So people was not enjoying the learning, and so that girl was thinking like, I want to create a world where people people don't have grades, where people enjoy how to learn, enjoy the math. So from uh, since I was really, really uh, young, I wanted to become a teacher and I want to become a teacher and math teacher. So following this dream, I yet uh, continued doing my career in mathematics and then I realized that in Spain and then I realized that I didn't know enough about the statistics. So what about to complete that and do statistics in Chile? Why Chile? Well, why not, right? So then I moved to Chile and then I made a master in statistics there and then I was teaching my, uh, mathematics and statistics at the in different schools in universities teaching professors teaching I arrived at some point that even I was receiving students that they said oh you were the professor of my of my brother so that means that I were there too much time right so then what I did <laughs> Is yet I realized that still we have these necessities to improve in education and make some uh, progress. So I needed more. I need uh, innovate and I needed technology. But I didn't have the knowledge about that. So then I decided to move to Canada. Why not Canada, right? <laughs> so then I moved here and then here I arrived and I met this artificial intelligence world that in Montreal, you know, that is Joshua Benjo and Mila and all of this that is like, that is the place, right? Why not okay so then I were there I, I made the master the professional master in uh, in artificial intelligence in, in machine learning and then I realized that oh, it's perfect because then I have the pieces I have the experience in education I have the experience in mathematics in statistics I know about the data I know about technology but oh, I don't know anything about business and if I want to create something like Civita Lauria that is a platform that is going to change the world because it's going to make that people, professors and students can connect in the perfect moment, in the perfect process, in the perfect process of professors teaching as they way to teach and the teachers, the students, in the teachers, the students learning in the moment that they need to learn how they need to learn. So, oh, amazing, right? But to do that is to create a business. And to create a business, as we talk, as we listened before, has a process, right? And we have to have a minimum viable product and all of these steps that is not easy. So I went to different um, accelerator programs, incubators in Datapreneur, in District 3, also in Spain, in Sein, uh, Sein in Navarra. And well, by the way, in Sein, all the, all the directors of the program are women. And believe me, when you have in business women the focus and how do you develop the project and how you put the focus in develop a business is absolutely different. So, uh, but we will talk about this later. So, in some point, I arrive uh, to some point that, well, I, I, I'm stuck in this process. I need a team. I need people in tech that want to be involved in education. And that is very, very hard. I realize that it's very hard even for, for people that all of, all of us, every one of us, we know that education is very important, but it's very difficult to find people in tech that be involved in educational projects. So in some point I said, oh, I'm not going to stop here. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my tools. I have high capacity to communicate and I have that, that, you know, that passion to talk and that passion to connect people and see connections between people, between things. So why not? I'm going to use my tools, my skills, and I'm going to do 
the social media work. So then I'm going to, I created, for example, with another mathematician uh, in, uh, like three days ago for the P day, the, the, the day of mathematics and high capacities or gifted students. Um, we made a, a very small reel about talking about mathematics and consciousness about this. Um, also, I, I created, I'm starting to develop my own page, uh, providing math classes and everything. And also I created a podcast that is like four, five months ago, that is Desde Tus Zapatos. Desde Tus Zapatos is a podcast to bring together professors and other agents in education to talk about what do we need to do to change education that today is really, uh, let's say, fragile, right? So Desde Tus Zapatos means from your shoes. And this is the idea that I'm doing today. <coughs> And why? Why we need to change education? Why we need to uh, move the things in a different way? Well, there are a lot of problems in education, but I bring here only three that I want to uh, bring them to show you just a little bit of what, what is happening and why we need to change this. We are going to talk about the glass sailing in adolescence for STEM girls, the lack of women leadership in STEM and the tech and the technology gap and inequalities. What is this thing of the glass sailing in adolescence for STEM girls? Here I'm going to read textually because I want to reflect, uh, make a reflection with you. Girls with high abilities in STEM often face the glass sailing in adolescence, hindering their progress in technology careers. This is from Psychology Today. Discrimination, lack of role models and support can deter girls from pursuing careers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, especially during adolescence. UNESCO. According to Resma Saujani, I will talk about her later, is amazing, founder of Girls Who Code, by the time girls reach middle school, they already feel like STEM isn't for them. It's a tech talk that you can say, and I recommend you, it's 12 minutes, it's really amazing, is teach girls bravery, not perfection. And look at this, if you read these three sentences, what do you read? If you have to extract one adjective here, what is the adjective here for the girls in STEM? It's fear. Is fear. Is fear about what is going to happen. Is fear about what if I'm if I'm a STEM woman, if I'm a mathematician, if I uh, if I'm a, a, a technology uh, profile, what is going to happen for me? And this is the sailing, the glass sailing. It's like it's something that is existing, it's existing, but it's not writing anywhere. <laughs> so it's like it's like a Schrodinger cat, right? It's alive and not alive at the same time. So this is the sailing. It's like okay. We are, but we are not. It's like, no, but you can progress as you want. Yeah, but who is there? Who is showing me how far I can arrive? And the people that I see, when I see them, is the small cases, and they show so big that it's like, it's too far. Well, I'm here to show you that I'm here to, you don't see me in the news, but you are going to remember this talk. So, what is happening? Look at this. In the students, when they are young, I want to give you also another information. Between 10 and 15% of people around the world, indifferent of gender, uh, ethnic, uh, social uh, development, countries, etc., between 10 and 15% of the people have high capacities, or uh, what can you say, uh, gifted students that you say here. That means that in this place, we have already people that have high capacities. But if I ask you to hand your hands and say, yes, I am this person, somebody? <laughs> well. Yeah, but you know, it's not something that people say. It's not something that people say, why? Because I'm afraid to say that I'm smart, you know? So, this is a huge problem because we are losing talent and we are losing talent that has the capacity to change the things for good. So why is it so difficult to have these leaders? Well, 
to have leaders in education, we need to have four pillars, okay? STEM for education, of course, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, that part is really necessary. Education, have background in education to understand what is happening, how people is learning, which problems are facing, etc. Business, we need to know about business because if not, you are not going to develop something. You need to know how, how difficult is that world and you need to go and face situations that are really, really, really hard and conflictive and aggressive. The business place is aggressive world. And of course, you need to have this hungry for justice, uh, social justice, for change the things in, in create a social impact. So to join the four things, it's a slightly difficult, but not impossible. It's only to empower, it's only to, to know that maybe I have the power that, that I know I have the profile of STEM and I love education and I really want to change the things. Okay, let's learn about business. And you, if you have the hungry for justice, social justice, you're done, you are done. You are a leader in a tech. <laughs> so how many leaders in a tech we have? Well, this is Holland IQ uh, study. And um, well, in this study, in orange, you will see the women. <laughs> In gray, you will see the men. It's, it's a study of 2023, so it's really, really uh, new, uh, very actual. And this part where you see the big, the big bar in orange is 77% of women in teachers at the school. <laughs> then 71% of women in healthcare. And then we grow in education. Still, we have a lot of women, right? But uh, now we are directors of schools. We are taking professors at the university that have like a, a position that is like another level. And then, oh, that is decreasing. When you start in the second block and you see the 16%, it's because we have the, the last, uh, OLNAQ made um, um, a convention of, uh, one, they selected 1,000 startups in education and only 144 around the world were living for women. But look at this. We have 77% of women in education. What is happening? Well, here you have 77% of women teachers. Then we go to principals and reduce to 57%. Oh, tenured professors, oh, 35. And if you go to startups, a little bit, okay? And what is the third problem that we have in education? We have the gap and inequalities with the technology. While in this world, in this developed world, we are worried about if ChatGPT is going to change education and destroy the minds of the people to be able to think. The other day I interviewed a professor in Colombia that was worried because this is going to generate a bigger gap in education for them. They are going to be far and far away from bringing opportunities for their students. By the way, ChatGPT is here. Thank you for a woman, <laughs> Mira Murati. So what is happening? The thing is that only 34% of the students in low and middle income countries have access to quality internet connection over the 60% in developed countries. Up to 3.7% of the world population lacks internet access. And other information, during pandemic we lost 11 million of girls. That those girls are lost. They are not going to come back to the opportunity to study. And remember that between 10 and 15% of the people around the world have the talent to be someone that is going to change the things. 11 million you lost. So, what do we do? Now it's like, now that I moved the floor, <laughs> what are the good news? <laughs> okay, let's make the change together. Here there are, there are many more women, okay? But here I brought three that I really like so much. That is, for example, Resma Saujani that I mentioned before, that she made the talk about uh, teach 
uh, girls to be brave and not to be perfect because that is one of the problems right women when we arrive to some point we want to be perfect and we don't have the you know to, to the capacity to say i go i mean just an example for example in my case i was like i'm mathematician but i was rejecting this part to talk that i love if you don't realize and why because if i am a mathematician that talk too much and show the passion and the, the capacity to have this other side, maybe I'm not going to be taken so serious as a mathematician. And I know, I am seeing your faces, <laughs> I know that you, you feel that feeling. Because I know that you feel that in some moment, right? So Resma is talking about that. And Resma created Girls Who Code, that uh, is a program to empower women to go to the tech world and, and the part of development <laughs> in technology. Priya Lakani, that is the CEO of Century Tech, and she uses uh, AI to, is doing a project that they are doing personalized learning uh, for students and uh, in, in programs of schools, and it's really a, a very good program said that Resma and Priya, if I remember well, they come from the um, humanities uh, careers. I mean, they are lawyers. But as I told you, you need the four things. So they didn't have the STEM uh, original career, but they developed that, okay? So if you see in all these women, you see the, the commons in factor, the, the factors in common, right? So, and the third one, Aja, Dave, that is, this is STEM. She, she came uh, from engineer, but also from arts. I love her because it's like she is engineer and also artist. So he's mixing everything, you know, the passion, the emotion, the intuition with the technology, right? And she is creating, a, she created Little Bits, an open source library of electronics modules that help people to create their own, um, their own electronics devices. So this is only an example of three. Go, go to internet, see, look for women, okay? And, and see that there are brave women doing things, but they are not in the news. So here there is a homework. <laughs> of course, I'm a teacher. So how do we do to change this? Here we have professors, we have students, and all the people that is listening online. Okay, so small actions, big changes. That is the thing. We need to do big, small steps for big impact. That's it, it's very simple. I bring just three ideas. Take whatever you want, you can create more, of course. <laughs> so for example, encourage female participation in STEM and ed tech activities. It's very easy. Let's do activities between STEM women and people in education and let's do STEM ed tech uh, events, activities. Why? Because we are going to enrich our abilities, our skills. We are going to increase the, the diversity, the innovation. We are going to gain a lot in this exchange and we are going to break down the gender stereotypes. We are going to realize that we can be passion and we can be also strong in tech knowledge. We can be both, I promise. Let's do promote technology education in underserved communities. I'm sure that here in Saarbrück there are communities that uh, I don't know people, that they don't have access to technology and if they get this education and I want to punctualize something that also the other day talking with this professor in Colombia was a very important point. Um, he said like technology, people when they said that you have to access to technology, they said like, oh, let's put a room with computers. Technology is much more, come on, we have cell phones everywhere, right? Technology is to put in a Lego, a robot. Technology is a lot of things and it's not necessary yet. This thing, right? Is the computational thinking, is the access to what the world is doing. Is it possible to bring to those communities? Of course it's possible. And you should do it. <laughs> we should do it. So what is going to create that? What is the effect, the consequence of that? Well, you are going to have a stronger community because you are going to have a stronger society because there is an exchange. We are giving power also to people that today don't know anything about technology. We are giving them the, ask, the possibility to access to a new 
a, a new job, to access, to move the economy, to get to feel uh, a person that is capable to serve others. So it's a huge impact, right? It's a small step, huge impact. And of course, support and uplift women leaders in STEM and tech. When you know women that are doing things in a tech, let's help them. Share the things that they are doing. Go to the events, move it. Show, show these women and let's move to get more, um, more uh, support, financial support for the women. More support in all the levels. Because that is going to help also to take a better decision making and innovation in the groups. In, it's going to bring also this capacity, you know, to care and at the same time bring the knowledge, right? So if we give visibility to this, we are going to help other girls in the future generations to just go for it without questioning what is going to happen in the future. And of course, we are going to create a better world for everyone. <laughs> so, okay. So what is the takeaway message for today? The future, and the thing that you have to bring in your mind, the future of STEM and tech is diverse, is innovative, and is inclusive. All the people has to be here, okay? So you can be part of it. And of course, if you want to invite me to be part of this, I'm very happy. I love all these projects and uh, yeah, or, or talks or we can create events, etc. I'm more than open to anything that helps to promote the education and technology together. Thank you. The what? It's like the biological clock of someone. And uh, from, what I've read, from what I've read, it's connected to the way, to the way some people learn or to the way some people have challenges during their learning process and everything. I don't know if something that you consider like it's something that was part of what you did. I didn't know it, but it's interesting, so I'm going to search about that. <laughs> I mean, in education, the thing is that now, for example, with this thing of the podcast, uh, talking with real people, you know, people that is in the schools every day, people that is doing the research and they are not seen, they are not in the news, you discover that really there are so many things that are possible to do and so many things that are doing already. And it's like non-stop. I mean, education, and, and I invite you as a STEM uh, profiles, to go really to a tech because the education is the base for everything. I mean, you are here because you receive education. So, um, so yeah, there are a lot of things and uh, um, I will check that. Thank you. Uh, one thing I've observed is that teachers, especially like elementary school teachers, are often reluctant to use technology uh, or they don't have a training to support their kids. Um, my daughter outdrew her teacher in, in Scratch like within three days. Yeah. Uh, how, how do we help with that? Like, how do we train teachers so that they can be good? Yeah, teachers? that is a great uh, question actually because yeah, it's true. People in, uh, I mean, I have a cousin that is professor at the school, a rural school, and she's reflect, you know, it's like, no, technology, no. And uh, yeah, you know, I think that comes from the not knowledge. So one of the things that is important is to bring these tech people to the schools and show that technology is much more 
than uh, gets all the fantastic news that you see that the world is going to be dominated by the machines, you know? So a good thing is to create exchange moments with the teachers at the schools to show that before of this, there is a computational thinking, for example. And that computational thinking, that way to create algorithms, is something that they are doing every single day, right? And from there, if you include this computational thinking, this algorithm thinking, in their things that they are doing day by day, I mean, you were talking about a child before. So if you bring that you know, that conceptualization to the school, they are going to feel that it's familiar, it's something that they are doing. So it's like, just go to the next step and use this like a tool to, you know, optimize your classes and also bring more talent to your students, open that box and create more opportunities to the creativity. So what we need is to inform. I really like what you said about inclusivity and taking into account like people who are out of the conversation right now. So thanks to talk about that. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Let me invite our next speaker. Uh, Karshita Jane, master's student from University of Montreal.